Well, hello, folks. I hope you're well. I really do. Right, we'll come up with a quick scores on the doors and a couple of musings, a couple of thoughts from myself. Right, quick scores on the doors. Right, uh, Peter, back with us today. I had only won today and it won. Round about even money. Nothing, no great shakes there, but he's amongst the winners again. Good news. Well done, Peter. Um, and just to, just let me expand on thing, things again with the, uh, the, the, the channels that we recommend and others that we wouldn't or I wouldn't. We recommend Mickey D. We recommend Peter Fillingham. Reasons that have already been mentioned on many occasions. But if anybody else is new to the channel and wants to know, message me and I will tell you why. Um, the channels that I wouldn't recommend from what I've seen. If he ever shows his face again, uh, old Peter Samsonitz, P Peter's Racing Tips, Cal Betts, Watchman Racing. A couple of them have left with the tails between the legs. One of them hasn't been seen for about six or eight months, but I believe he still sells bets. They're the ones we wouldn't look to. They all charge and they're not very transparent. If I was putting somebody in touch with anybody that pet charges for bets, the only one at the moment, at the moment, I would look at would be Neil Maurice. Now, we've not mentioned Neil on here for a good while, other than me having the odd dig every couple of days. Now, I've been asked why I'm having a dig at Neil, because we went for Neil in a big way early on this year, and we asked him to operate a profit and loss, and he has done ever since, and it's to his credit. The reason I say that I would recommend people to, I wouldn't be recommending anybody to anybody that charge, charges for bets, really. Not when you've got two superstars like Mr. Fillingham and Mickey D that aren't charging, uh, that offer a great service, and that are extremely transparent. Neil himself is transparent, but some of Neil's figures don't tally up. And also with Neil, although he's only doing his profit and loss based on singles, He's still every couple of days when he's had two in out of three or whatever else it may have been, quoting doubles and quoting return prices for doubles. Well, that's all well and good if you advise them and you put them in the profit and loss. But when you're not doing it, I don't think it's right. Also, when he may have two horses win and he's classing them as a five, eight or nine to one double, that also isn't so bad when you've only mentioned two horses. But when you've mentioned three and many people will be doing a treble, which means that double sends the bet down anyway because one has lost. Or many will do a Trixie, of which there could be four bets there, or patents, or whatever it may be. The figures that he's quoting aren't really spot on. You can say there's a five to one double there, but it's not really five to one if somebody's putting three, four, or five different bets on. Maybe two singles, three doubles, a treble. That's a lot of bets. If they're doing a each way, it's even more so. So it isn't to me really a five to one double. We shouldn't be sort of quoting that in winning figures. Um, but what I will say about Neil is, although I, th I think some of his addings up as well, live a little to be, um, a little to the imagination. I'm saying it wrong. You know what I mean, folks. And I only know that because I've got uh, my sniffer dog, my attack dog, Keith, policing him all the time. And uh, I think Keith's workings out are absolutely spot on. I think they're uh, nearer the mark than Neil's sometimes are. But at least he is doing a profit and loss. And at this moment in time, he is winning more than he's losing. He's getting a return most days. So, well done, Neil. Good to you. I'm going to try and stop mentioning his name for a while, but I do hope the profit and loss gets tidied up. And I do hope, if you mention in doubles, you know, you can always say, well, there'd have been a double up there. But mention there was three horses, and the people have had doubles, trebles, singles. You know, the, the, the odds that you're quoting don't really ring true, I don't believe. You know, you're not getting a, a five to one return back when you're putting all those bets on you're getting a hell of a lot less than that and you've got to think people are being charged for your advices as well so they're not coming in five points on front really are they right and then who else would we not recommend well we're going to in the next couple of weeks uh, be mentioning jeff lawton a fair old bit we're going to be mentioning him because i heard some more on him last night i believe just since he did that thing with betting people with sam and not or eight highly and star bets I believe it's only after that he's decided to start selling tips. And I believe he's selling them at about 40 quid a week, 160 quid a month. Luckily, not many are watching his channel yet, so hopefully not many have been stupid enough to part with the money. Because uh, I believe what he's doing, as I think I've touched on before, is he's giving you the tips for free, but if you want the better prices, the, i.e. the prices before 9am, that's where you're paying the £40 a week for. But most of his bets are around the even money mark. And somebody told me last night, if you'd have been betting with him this month, on an even stakes profit, although we had two winners earlier on this week, you're still about 20 or 30 points down, I think he said. That's not the kind of information you want to be paying for when he's when he's struggling. 
And when everything's round about even money, why would you pay for that, if you ask me? And the other one is the main man, the Ed Onsha. We're definitely going to be looking at uh, this fellow in the last, next couple of weeks. That's Holden's Horses, the Sheriff of Tippingham, as he, as he likes to tell us. Um, well, he's a good friend of Neil's. I think they're in the same stable there at Hollywood Bets. I'm pretty sure they are. And uh, he, he's come up with even more bets today. I mean, he's, he's one that I couldn't remember the other day. He's his Double Dipper. I think the Double Dipper is... It's the Emerald bet, but not quite as green. Or it's the Gate Pass bet, but rather than paying for a week or a, a month of a Gate Pass, the Double Dipper you pay for daily. But it turns out today when he's talking about the Double Dipper, the Double Dipper can be a straight bet. It can be an each way bet. It can be two singles and a double. It could be two each way singles and a double. Really, he's doing the same what Neil's doing there. I mean, he, he says he had one up the other day. Uh, I think two winners, I think he said. I think they came to five or six to one, so they wouldn't have been great prices. I think he said that he had an each way double dipper up yesterday at 20s and 15 to two. Not bad odds, he's quite right there. But he mentioned people, are, you say, he said people are doing them as two singles, two each way singles, and an each way double. That's a lot, a lot of bets. That's a lot of bets. And you've got to realise you're paying the fiver to him as well. And if your bet goes down, you're paying the fiver plus lots of bets. If he's advising a straight double or an each way double, it's not so bad. It's one bet, isn't it? You can split a stake, it can still be a level stake or it can be a double stake. But if you're putting two singles on and a double or two each way singles and an each way double, that is a lot of bets. But today, as I say, he's really gone for it today because he's had a day yesterday where he's had a couple of each ways placed. It's, it's unbelievable today that Dundalk happens to be on tonight and Dundalk, as it turns out, is one of his big five race courses. It's where he has all his success. He must have been speaking to your man, no, Sandro. Sandro's mustard in Ireland, absolutely mustard. He's the best in Ireland, Sandro. He's the best by a country mile. No one's had more winners and no more big price. I would imagine Mr. Olden's probably number two behind Sandro on the list of Irish tipsters. He's probably the second best because it's one of his favourite courses. So tonight he's offering an each way Yankee. What else was he offering? He's obviously his double dipper and he's got a special bet on tonight. One of his real, real big bets. He's platinum bet. Now, when he has a big one, it's the platinum bet. When he really fancies what's wrong, it's the platinum bet. Now, they'd all normally cost five or ten quid to go, all of those. But tonight, as a one off, he's doing it for just one Brad Pitt. No, it wasn't Brad Pitt. That Brad Pitt, shit. No, I, I, I forget shit. It sounds shit, but no, it, it's genuine. He's good. What did he call it? He called it something like that. He, he, he used a name that. Tenor, tenor, cock and It weren't a cock and tenor. Words of Big Ben, like that's 10. It was something, he had a name, it weren't Brad Pitt. I, I think when I'm listening to him all, I'm thinking, this is a load of Brad Pitt, this. I always think it was a load of shit, but it might not be, some of them might come in. But I'm thinking, oh, he's getting rid of lots of bets tonight, isn't he? Loads of bets. He's doing what they all do, like the Watchmen and all these. They'll give you one free bet, but then they'll lure you into the web, into the old web, and they've got loads of bets, and you're paying here, and you're paying there, and you're paying here, and you're... And before you realise it, you're losing 30 or 40 quid a day. But you might get lucky, you might have a winner or two and stay with him for a few weeks. And then when it really gets rocky and you realise you've done your conquest big style, you've gone. And then he just does it all again. It's reset and repeat, isn't it? That's what he does. That's what they all do. Well, anyway, I'm very busy with work and life at the moment. Very busy. And I am next week. I think from Easter week, my life's going to get a little bit easier. I keep saying it is, but I think it is from Easter week onwards. So if it is, I'm just... T taking a watching brief at the moment. I'm watching old Mr. Olden and I'm watching Mr. Lawton and seeing how it goes and getting some feedback from sources on here because many of our watchers are, are telling me bits of what's happening out there. So forming more opinions and greater opinions and then in a couple of weeks' time when I've got more time on my hands, that's when we're going to ask them the same kind of questions that we asked Neil and Peter, that's Sandro, and Watchman, I can't remember his name. Is it Kevin? I think it's Kevin. Two of them have buggered off. One of them has tried to do a profit and loss, as I say. It's not as on the ball as we'd like it, but he is doing one. But in response to, to what somebody said about Neil, I'm going to try to stop having a dig at Neil if I can. That said, I would hope he, he tidies his, some of the things up he's saying and, and, and some of the figures there, because if he does, I've got nothing to say. But if somebody was to say, who would you recommend anybody goes to for paid bets at this moment in time, the only person I could think of is Neil Maurice.
But if somebody t- was to say, would you go to Neil Maurice, Peter Fillingham or Mickey D, I'd always put people to the last two. Why would I not? They charge nothing. They're 100% honest. They've both got thriving communities. Well, Peter's isn't as thriving, but it's growing on a daily basis. Um, and they tell you the truth. It's just no no smoke and mirrors with them. No snake all there whatsoever. None whatsoever. Not a cowboy amongst them. So, that's the uh, scores on the doors. It was an elongated one. It's ten and a half minutes. I know it was, but there was a couple of things I needed to get off my chest. And I need to let those of you know the plan forward. So, on the horizon, we're looking at the Sheriff of Tippingham, I'm going to be Robin Hood and stop him. Robin, what's he doing? Is he robbing from the poor? He's robbing from the poor, I think. I think he is. You know, and then we'll also look at Mr. Lawton, that millionaire of the million pound house who's asking £40 a week for odds on shots. Doesn't seem right to me, that really. He bets eight to ten grand himself every single day of the week. He's got to get some £40 of people just to provide them with odds on shots. Doesn't seem right, really. Doesn't, doesn't seem right with me, that, but maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. 